Hello there. You are listening to In the Books, a podcast where we over-intellectualize book-to-screen adaptations. I think that's our most accurate introduction yet. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, I'm Michelle. Uh, you can find me at Musings on the socials. And I'm Rita. I'm at Annoying Rita on Instagram. And welcome to our discussion of episode 12, aka the finale of Normal People. Finally made it. Thank you <laughs> for making it this far into what is our longest series of podcasts yet. It's been yes. four months, Michelle. And admittedly, oh. there were a few gaps. So <laughs> thank oh. you for sticking with us. It requires yes. a lot of dedication. Um, mm -hmm. We'll begin, as we always do, with the recap. Uh, the episode began with Connell driving his Ford Fiesta, Marianne in the passenger seat. Everything is right in the world. Marianne thanks Connell for letting her read his newest story. She is impressed that he has such a vibrant inner life and encourages him to submit it to the college's literary magazine. Connell is all bashful, but you can tell he values her opinion and agrees to her suggestion. We then cut to the most hipster-looking cafe in all of Dublin. Indeed. A small group of friends are singing happy birthday to Marianne, and she valiantly attempts to blow out the candles on her cake. Marianne thanks Joanna for making her the cake, and Nal, forever her number one fan, asks about the presents she received. Connell explains that he gifted her a book of poetry, and when awkward questions about her family come up, she skillfully sidetracks them. Connell and Marianne share a look that tells the viewers all we need to know about the status of her relationship with her family, which is none. <laughs> they head back to Connell's dorm room, or Marianne's dorm room, it's hard to tell, like they're both, yeah. they both have a scholarship, and get ready for bed by brushing their teeth and doing some very bizarre skin care. Someone please explain why the girl has... <laughs> Only cleansing her cheeks and then like wiping it off. Ugh. It threw me. Marianne receives a message from her mother. Connell asks if it's a happy birthday message, but of course it's not. It's actually a request for Marianne to send her mum the key to the Dublin flat. It's an eviction notice, basically. Gotta hand to Denise, she really timed that in the most hurtful way possible. Skillfully done. We then cut to what I can only describe as a sex montage. <laughs> no need to focus on that. Post-coital, yes. Connell lies with his head on her lap and asks her if she liked it. She says, very much. And I'm inclined <laughs> to believe her. <laughs> She's, uh, yeah. She was enjoying herself. <laughs> they seem to have weathered last episode's mini-crisis about Connell's inability to mix sex with pain, and perhaps now she's in a better mental space. She doesn't need the violence. One can only hope. Yes. Marianne goes to the local pool and swims laps. There's a moment where she looks across admiringly at an older woman as she gets out of the pool. She then heads to her lecture with Joanna. As they leave, they make plans to get takeout and watch a movie together. Joanna asks when they became 50-year-olds. <laughs> 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 she wonders if their first year selves would even recognize what they've become. Marianne, I think correctly, attests that first year Marianne would have been amazed that she was finally happy. <laughs> Marianne is studying with Connell when she notices a kind of dazed, far off expression on his face and asks him what's up. He tells her he has been offered a place at a Master of Fine Arts creative writing program in New York. Marianne is surprised because he never mentioned he was applying. Connell admits he didn't want her to think he was delusional about his talent, and Marianne sort of scolds him and congratulates him. Connell is awash with anxiety and tells her he isn't going. He could barely walk down the street in Dublin a couple of months ago without having a panic attack. Marianne tells him not to think about it for now, but when Connell again insists he won't go, she gives him a skeptical look. We then cut to a party where Sadie O'Shea, she of calling Connell a genius fame, 
is giving a speech to the literary society, praising Connell for stepping in at the last moment and becoming, and I quote, turning out to be the most naturally fucking gifted editor of all times. <sighs> End quote. Just classic Connell. Perfect at everything. Oh my gosh. I hate yes. it. Uh, <laughs> she is such a fangirl. <laughs> and we join you in that admiration. <laughs> uh, <laughs> She raises a toast and everyone proceeds to get drunk. Marianne witnesses the whole thing and mouths well done from across the room, whilst Connell looks awkward and shy. Back in their dorms, Marianne and Connell are making dinner together. They're each chopping vegetables quite badly. Someone get these poor children a cooking lesson? Marianne didn't even wash the celery. Yeah, Ooh. this is this triggered me. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, not the point of the scene, though. Connell invites Marianne for Christmas, and although she is initially hesitant, when she learns it was Lorraine's idea, she agrees. Okay, so they're driving home for Christmas. Or driving home for Christmas. <laughs> um, <laughs> they've got presents in the back, twinkly lights all around them. Connell lets out a loud, a loud fart. <laughs> And they both begin to giggle. Oh, they've reached that stage. Yeah. <laughs> As they pull up to Connell's house, Lorraine opens the front door and greets them with enthusiasm and big bear hugs. Marianne looks particularly emotional as she hugs Lorraine back. Finally, a mother figure. Yes. Cut to Christmas lunch. Connell's whole extended family and much younger cousins are around and they all have a lovely time eating turkey with silly paper crowns from their crackers. <laughs> the family then play a hilarious game of heads up with the post-it note of Kim Kardashian stuck on grandma's head. It's just <laughs> so cute. Uh, afterwards, Connell finds Marianne putting a jumper on in his bedroom and he asks her if it's too much. She tells him that actually it's really lovely it's a proper christmas your heart just breaks when you realize she probably hasn't had one of those before because her family is shitty yeah yeah a few days later connell marianne and lorraine are leaving the supermarket discussing the couple's new year's plans or lack thereof connell's school friends are all going to be at brennan's marianne is weary of joining them for obvious reason Mm -hmm. uh, as they round the street corner, they see Marianne's mother walking down the street. Lorraine goes over and wishes her a happy new year. Denise blanks her, ignores her, keeps walking, pretends that never happened. Oh my god. <sighs> I have thoughts about this woman. Uh, on the car ride home, Marianne asks Lorraine how the people in town see her mother. Lorraine tries to respond as diplomatically as possible, and most the most polite way she can think to describe her mother is odd. <laughs> this is news to Marianne, and she looks a little sad to realize that her mother is also a social outcast, as she was for years. She heads out to the beach and has a brisk walk by herself. When she gets back, Connell again asks her to go to Brennan's with him. This time, she agrees. Marianne and Connell enter the pub holding hands. 17-year-old Marianne would never believe it. When he lets go to give his old mates a hug, she looks momentarily disappointed, but goes over to greet Rachel and Karen and the rest of the girls, and they all hug like old friends. Connell then joins them and wraps his shoulder um, around hers. Um, they head to the bar together. When it turns midnight, Connell approaches Marianne and kisses her. The moment is intercut with moments from their first kiss. They declare their love and hug. It's moving day at Marianne's old Dublin flat. Connell is packing up his tiny car with her things. As they sit on the floor of the empty living room and drink a cup of tea, Marianne looks around the room. She tells Connell it never felt like home to her. She then gives Connell... A look. He immediately knows something is up. She tells him she has been thinking about the MFA offer, and she can imagine Connell in New York. Connell admits to thinking about it too, but the idea of it feels too hard. Marianne, who is now in her hashtag healing era, tells Connell that while it might be painful and difficult at first, it has the potential to be amazing. 
writing and living in New York. Connell asks if she would come with him, but Marianne shakes her head. She's finally in a good place in her life and tells him she wants to live the life she's leading. Connell recognises what an achievement that is for her and seems to understand. He begins to cry, telling her he would miss her too much. Marianne assures him that it would get better over time and he begins to promise to be back after the year. And Marianne stops him. Neither of them know where they will be in a year. Connell tells her that he wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her. She's the reason he's even a writer. She agrees. He would probably be somewhere else and an entirely different person, but he's done the same for her. She says they have done so much good for one another. Connell tells her he loves her and he will never feel the same way about anyone else. They smile through their tears at each other as Marianne declares that they will both be okay. The end. The end. We finally oh. made it. I'm just going to sing the whole episode because I'm just so happy. <laughs> Not happy that it's over because it was great, but also I yeah. need to sleep for like two weeks. <laughs> so what did you think? Oh, I thought it was a lovely way to end this series. Um, you know, it as I had mentioned last week, I, there was a part of me that was uh, almost worried that I was going to be feel let down um, by the finale. But not possible. You know, I can happily, I can happily say that that. Um, did not happen. Uh, I thought that um, initially my my romantic heart was wanting uh, Marianne to go to New York with Connell and, you know, for them to live happily ever after. But um, in retrospect, um, it was the way that they needed to be. They had gotten to the point where they'd um, found peace within themselves, uh, of themselves. Um, and, uh, you know, it was, it was time to be able to go and have an adventure as two healthy people. Um, you know, I think that, you know, down the road, you know, maybe two years later, um, that Marianne would be in New York and would visit Connell and, um, you know, they would have the opportunity to reconnect, but, you know, not harboring any hopes of, you know, them getting married and having babies and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, it, it, it felt, it felt real and natural. I love the way that they um, allowed for there to be time between when he first gets the notice and the next time they discuss it. Um, you know, it's like they they um, gave themselves a reprieve for their Christmas holidays so that they could just go and enjoy, um, you know, family and friends. And, um, you know, wait until they got back to Dublin before they decided to start um, revisiting it. And I just I just I just love this show for what they do with granting their the characters time to resolve things. It's honestly you know? the most like healthy dynamic I've ever seen on yeah. screen. It's like, oh, yeah. we have an issue. Let's take sit with it. Mm -hmm. Each take time and then come back yep. and talk about it later. Like, yep, this is hot. <laughs> Can we get more of this? Just yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. You've watched this thing eleven billion times by now, and I know that's an exaggeration, but you know that's me. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what did you think of this episode or this rewatch? Um, you know, given that we've had the opportunity to basically peel the the layers away from the onion, uh, pretty significantly. Like I said last week, I feel like everything climaxed at the end of episode eleven. Like that's the real climax of the story, and um, it was really nice to just like. This episode feels like an epilogue where you just like get 
weird fart jokes yeah. and <laughs> spend time with Connell's family and watch Marianne go swimming for like two minutes. <laughs> like it's just like a good relaxing yeah. time. And like I'm because I'm so familiar with the ending and I like the ending, like I don't feel the kind of anxiety and frustration that I do in the previous episodes. Like this is just a good mm-hmm. time for me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And um, yeah, I mean the scene where they kiss in the pub, and the yeah. flashback, and the oh god, it's just a really great way of of concluding in a show and saying like, hey, look, guys, see how far mm-hmm. they've come, and you really feel like a weird sense of nostalgia for something that happened like maybe two years ago. <laughs> yeah, it's not like you know this this has been like a five year journey for these two. It's it's not that long. Yeah, they dated like last year. It's just, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it just gets you all in your feels, and you, you, I don't know. I, I feel very like satisfied mm-hmm. with the yeah. conclusion. Like emotionally, I feel like they wrapped things mm-hmm. up brilliantly. Um, and the ending is very controversial. A lot of people hate it. Really? <laughs> they really, they really, really? hate the ending. What? Uh, what? Yeah. What did they um, want? The, the fairy tale I think thing? people want the fairy right. tale happy ending because they they approach the show as a romance, mm. um, which I don't think this... Sh- I know the show is about a relationship, but to ever suspect that these two were going to end up, like, running off into the yeah. sunset, like, this isn't a romance. Well... Um, and it wouldn't that have felt really incongruous with the tone of the rest of the story to be like, do do do, we're gonna yeah. be together forever. Yeah, I, everything's I happy. I think that that um, leaving it open um, for you know future interpretations, you know that kind of thing. Hell, fanfic people, this is the perfect opportunity for fan fiction. <laughs> you know, if, if <laughs> or in my opinion. A sequel. Yes. Sally. Be, Sally. I that want would a, be awesome. A book about them in their middle that age, would be please. Awesome. Please, please, please. Um, but, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it is um, reminding me of that uh, one of the uh, K dramas that I watched. Was it? It was last year. I think it was. Um, the Interest of Love, which. Um, spoilers for anybody that hasn't seen it. Um, you know, I only like fluff. This is depressing. I'm not going to watch. <laughs> well, and I'm going to tell you, it 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 is a an ending kind of similar to this. You know, we don't have the we don't have the 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 couple getting together and you know happily ever after. And the 16th episode is you know all about tying up loose ends um that kind of thing um you know there's there's a question mark um and so you know i can appreciate what they've managed to do with uh this show you know and i'll say that that normal people um is is far and above um between the two the ending is much better than the other one, but yeah. Well, I think the the novel that Sally mm-hmm. Rooney wrote was it again not a romance. It's a story about a relationship that profoundly changed and also improved the lives of these two characters, and that is the major point that she like hammers home in the final scene. Is like this relationship improved their lives, and it doesn't in a way it doesn't really fucking yeah. matter if they stay together or they yeah. break up. The important thing is that it was so profound mm-hmm. for them. Like and, and and what Marianne says at the end that they will be okay. I mean For me, I'm like that's, that's it. The, that's what makes I I think like this is actually a uh-huh. happy ending and people oh. are like so Absolutely. I, a, I didn't I cry happy yeah. tears. I cry, but I yeah, cry happy I, tears. I didn't take I'm, like, it any other way place. than it being um, a happy ending for these two after the hellscape that they've been through um, for them to both be in a space where, you know, they can be happy for one another and they're, and, you know, they're um, 
you know, independent futures. Um, but to know that they will always love one another, irregardless of whether they wind up getting back together or or anything along the those lines, you know, it's like they they will love one another. I mean, Charles forever. and Lily probably will because these kids are just obsessed with each other. It's like really, I think like this ending sort of sorts viewers into two camps. There are those people who think about the characters after the show ends and care about mm-hmm. all that stuff, and then there's people like <laughs> me. I only give a shit about what happens on screen. <laughs> what happens afterwards, I don't really give a shit. Like it's over. <laughs> I'm not sat here thinking, oh, wow, I wonder what they're doing. <laughs> like, it's over. I, they were together on screen, and that's what matters to me. <laughs> this is what annoys me when, like, people get together in the final five seconds of a TV show, mm-hmm. um, and then you're like, okay, but I just wasted, like, <laughs> ten hours yeah. of my life of them not being together. <laughs> And then they kiss yeah. right at the end. Like, that's not satisfying to me. I want it yeah. on screen. <laughs> Give it to me on screen. Off screen relationship does nothing for me. Oh, but yeah. Thought it was just great. Um, Speaking of uh, potential mm-hmm. sequels, there kind of already is one. <laughs> so, um, into 2016, mm-hmm. which, by the way, is. Two years before the book was mm-hmm. published, Sally Rooney published a short story in the White Review, which is kind of a sequel to Normal People because the story takes place when they're both 23. What? I know. I will send you the link. It'll, I'll probably attach it to the... Should I attach the it to the... show notes. Yeah, episode? absolutely. Yeah. For anyone who's interested, bear in mind, this is a short story that predates the publication of the novel so the finished book that is normal people doesn't really align completely with the events that we get in the novel mm-hmm. and the show but i think it's really worth reading if you want more time yes. with these characters <laughs> um you get kind of an insight into how things can change between like a first draft mm-hmm. of a story and the finished mm-hmm. product i feel like marianne and connell aren't as fleshed mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. yet as they eventually end up being um and it's a very good meditation on the her relationship marianne's relationship Mm. with pain so if okay so in terms of book versus the episode again very similar i think the one distinct difference is the sadie of it all um (laughs) she's much more of a discussion point that's one way (laughs) of putting it um between connell and marianne (laughs) I, I, Marianne just keeps bringing her up all the time, but I don't think she actually suspects Connell of cheating on her or, like, fancying mm-hmm. her or anything, but it's just that Sadie is also a writer, ah. and that's pretty much she acknowledges in her thoughts uh, that's the one aspect of his life that she can't really get an insight into, and it makes her paranoid. <laughs> Sadie can, obviously, because she's right. also a writer, and that ends up being, like, a spot of huge insecurity for mm-hmm. Marianne. I am so glad they removed that yes. from the show because I think without being in her yeah. head, having that explanation and having Marianne be like, it just seems slightly yeah. psychotic yeah. <laughs> to be like, do you fancy yeah. Sadie? Like, you know, yeah. they've they've <laughs> they've been through it all, and we don't need any more. But what about her? Or what about him? Kind of thing. It's like now let's let's move past all of that um i do i do think you need the the context in her head to make the scene yes work and you can't have that in a mm-hmm. tv show exactly but i think the general vibe of the book is like yeah they're mm-hmm. healed but also they're still a little bit fucked well, up <laughs> so, i know, mean there's room for more nuance in a novel than i think you could get in a tv yeah. show and you know god knows you know even if you have gone to therapy and you're you're doing great you're by no means perfect and 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 flawless now so yeah it would have been a bit of a curveball for a tv show mm-hmm. narrative though you would have been like wait where did this fucking yeah. come from <laughs> agree uh, I, um, I just i i love how faithful uh they have been with the adaptation uh, 
it's probably my favorite book to screen adaptation yet. I would argue that this may be the best mm-hmm. one of all time. And we've seen oh, a yeah. lot. Um I mean my other my favorite one my other favorite one is the Jane Austen adaptation of uh, Northanger Abbey, but that's just because it's the only one of Northanger <laughs> Abbey, I think, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> is it as good as I think it is or do I just love Henry Tilly? I don't know but like this is much more faithful yes. than anything else that has, yeah. we have seen yeah this was this and was amazing I love that mm-hmm. this exists so that we can point at it hey, and see? go hey you know you you can just put the book yeah. on the screen like, yo, like people. that's an option see also normal people that's how you do it people are always like well you Oh, a book's different. You can't just put it on screen. But can you? That's the question normal people ask. And, and answered. What we found out is that it's successful. Yes, and answered very successfully as, yes, yes, you can. <laughs> you can, and it's good, and it wins yes. awards, and then it makes Paul Maskell a superstar. Yeah. <laughs> so why are we changing yes. everything? What's the point? Yes. <laughs> anyway. Okay, into the yes. plot lines of this episode. Um, one of, I think, the most powerful storylines was Marianne's relationship mm-hmm. with her mother. Um, mm-hmm. I found the interactions to be really devastating and accurate. <laughs> Very yeah. real. I mean, the cold shoulder yeah. and the terse text messages, yeah. standard operating procedure of a terrible yeah. mother. <laughs> Just... I mean, you know, I... I think that, you know, last week we were talking quite a bit about, um, you know, the why her mother did not uh, respond when um, Alan was going completely berserk um, with Marianne. And, you know, we were saying, well, you know, she is she is a survivor herself. And, you know, maybe she was, you know, a little traumatized or frightened. And, but, no! <laughs> no! I don't think that's true. We weren't wrong about that. No. It's like, no! I retract everything I said last week. I retract her- nothing. She is traumatized. <laughs> in in. In in my defense of her, um, you know, yeah, she is she is traumatized, but man, she failed abysmally in trying to rectify the situation. Um, you know, the, oh, the yeah. petty. Well, she didn't try. No, did she? not she at, didn't all. Try at all. Um, you know, the the petty. Send me the keys to the Dublin flat as soon as possible. It's like that's petty. That is so petty. Um, you know, if you don't want her living there, then fine. Be an adult and talk to and her. tell her that, okay, uh, send me the keys, you know, that kind of thing. Instead of just being terse and uh cold. Uh and the the encounter in town, um, that made me want to reach through the television and shake her. <laughs> Because it's like, wow, you, you you cannot spare a happy Christmas, happy New Year to your own daughter. Okay, but imagine this scenario. She has broken up, like, everything has happened. She's broken off with Marianne. She's angry at her. And then she sees Marianne strolling around mm-hmm. the town with her new mom, mm-hmm. Lorraine, and the boy she disapproves Mm -hmm. of like of course she's gonna ignore them i can't believe i'm defending her look (laughs) all i'm saying is that even terrible people oh yeah are survivors like that's the thing that would like it's like always bothers me is like people expect domestic violence survivors to be like perfect Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people and really Mm -hmm. sympathetic and it's like no she's she's a pretty awful person but she's still worthy of sympathy like I still feel a level of, like, she didn't deserve to face the years of abuse that she did, and I will not apologise for feeling sympathy for her. Do I think she's a good mother? No. But I don't know how to separate the years of abuse she went through with her being a mother, because they're so intertwined. Mm -hmm. Like, she's not 
able to be there for another person at all. She's a very cold, unfeeling person who makes uh, who calculates her relationship with Marianne through her academic achievement and her social status and what she can do for her as a person, not on an emotional level at all. There's no warmth between them. Mm-hmm. And I can't separate that from her trauma because I think she shut down emotionally. Mm-hmm. So it's like very complicated. I find this character troubling, but also fascinating because it's like just in that one scene where she looks at her mm-hmm. in the town, I'm like, mm-hmm. that tells me like 17 billion different <laughs> things about this woman. You know, yeah. like the, you, there's a, there's layers to mm-hmm. this. She's unsympathetic, but then she's also like she's gone through so much. I can't, it's like I can't um, I can't judge her. Is the thing if if I had been through what she had, I don't know that I would be a very good mother either. Well, I you know? I will be judgy for both of us. Judge, judge. Thank you. Judge, 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 judge. I save my judging judge. for Bridgerton, where I <laughs> <laughs> where I'm like. This bitch. Uh, uh. It's a much more frivolous show. I feel like with um with this, even with Alan, like I find her very hard time being like, oh, Alan's the worst. I mean, he's terrible, but he's also a victim of abuse. He's being enabled by his mother, and like nobody's helping him. Yeah, it's just so so complicated. Like real life. Like this is the realest mm-hmm. shit. Like where I have a really hard time in real life. Maybe because I've been through too much therapy in putting people in yeah. good or bad categories because I feel like we're yeah. all victims of circumstances. Yeah. And both Alan and her mother have been through mm-hmm. so much. And I mean, in a, in many ways, Marianne is very, very lucky that she found mm-hmm. Connell because he was able to, just like an escape mm-hmm. hatch, get her out of this terrible family yeah. dynamic. And she was able to be in the loving environment with mm-hmm. Lorraine mm-hmm. and build a better relationship with herself yeah. and you know nobody was there for her mother and her and alan to get them out of their situation so they're still trapped in that terrible house yeah. together being miserable at least marianne gets to like fuck off and be loved by somebody and heal mm-hmm. oh rita you're a good person i know it's just my undoing <laughs> <sighs> oh, now, uh, Marianne, you know, as we've talked about, has come a very long way. And, uh, you know, we see in this episode that she has uh, developed a comfort um, with herself, her her body, you know, who she is um, in this episode. And uh, uh, it's a pretty beautiful thing to see. Uh, what do you think? I cried. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the oh, scene yeah. of her swimming. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. And then when she just looks over and admires the, the older lady, mm-hmm. I sobbed. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's just the change mm-hmm. in her relationship to her own body. I see little hints like she not one cigarette this episode. Like the girl. Oh, my gosh is looking after herself. I didn't notice that. I really feel like she's in her self-care era. She's yeah. not yeah. smoking. I mean, she does drink a few times, but she's not but like... not like as crazy as she has been in the past. Yeah. Um, but not that uh, we don't find her drunk self amusing. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the comment that Joanna... Uh, says about you know what would their first year selves even recognize them now um <laughs> uh yeah you know it's it's uh I, I mean how many times have i thought you know if i could have a conversation with my 20 year old self what would i say um and um you know probably be fine <laughs> probably yeah it's like you're you're going to be fine um but you know, uh, as a po- my first instinct would probably be to run far, run fast. Uh, but uh, you know, it it's it is you know, a, a, an, a, it would be an opportunity to be able to say, I know everything seems like it is too much right now, but you're gonna be okay. <laughs> That's the thing. Like you can't 
like if you stop yourself from going through experiences then you can't grow from them mm-hmm. and it's like yeah i know it sucks but you'll get through it and you'll be better absolutely and speaking of her friendship with joanna mm. um that joke about them being like oh would we even recognize ourselves mm-hmm. <laughs> Reminds me so much of the conversations me and my friends have, and it's nice. Oh, it feels so comforting, like mm-hmm. a warm, like a warm bath. Um, their <laughs> friendship on screen. Um, yeah. After the shit show that we saw with Peggy, this <sighs> is so healthy. Yeah, I love the uh, relationship with Joanna. I like the birthday party. I thought that was so lovely, um, and it just. It just showed how much she has come to value uh, Joanna's company and friendship. Um, just to to see how they were on screen, it was really lovely. Reminded me of um, a number of my very close uh, friends uh, here in town, and uh, that was it. It made me think to myself you know you need to get on the phone and call these people <laughs> <laughs> get some takeout watch a movie exactly some... i think um in the novel there's like a real moment where she she realizes like oh the, the relationships they had in my first year weren't real they weren't friendships mm-hmm. so it was really nice to see her then have all these people show up for her for her birthday mm-hmm. including her bestie Niall yes. who was like hey yes <laughs> uh, <laughs> I love I love her like and there's also the moment later on where she, she like hugs Eric and I was just like oh how far we've come I know right oh my god <laughs> look people <laughs> Like for such an outcast, she is actually quite good at making real connections, mm-hmm. and she is loved. And yeah, I imagine that after Connell leaves for New York, oh. she will have support a support network. Yeah. Like she isn't just relying on Connell anymore. Like she has she's, friends, mm-hmm. and she's going to be completely fine. Mm-hmm. And it's not going to be like Sweden where she was completely isolated. Yeah, she'll just like chill with Joanna, <laughs> go for some swims. <laughs> She'll be fine. Go and visit Lorraine. Um, yeah. You know that kind of thing. Um, yeah, she's there. She's gonna be fine. It'll be fine. Um, Connell's MFA. Oh wow! Absolutely stupid that he ever considered not going. Connell, what the fuck? Oh, I get him so hard. <laughs> I get him so hard. Um, you know. Um, You know, and especially, you know, given that he, you know, and he speaks to it. He says, you know, I couldn't walk down a street in Dublin uh, a few months ago without having a panic attack. Um, You know, the the prospect of leaving Carrick Lee for Dublin was something that um, was incredibly. Let's face it, that was a trauma. Yeah, (laughs) incredibly difficult for him, you know, for him to go from Dublin to New York. you know, and again, not know anyone. Um, I can, I can understand his apprehension. Of course, mm-hmm. but I'm like one of those people. Be scared and do it anyway, <laughs> because this is like, and I mean, they never said where the MFA offer was from, but I assumed Colombia. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know why. Um, it's gonna be a really important thing for his career Mm -hmm. as well if he's pursuing writing yeah then he needs to maybe leave ireland Mm -hmm. broaden those horizons Mm -hmm. meet new people i know he has historically struggled with that because he's but now that he has processed all of his oh i don't fit in anywhere Mm -hmm. shit he can maybe take advantage of the fact that he is an outsider Mm -hmm. because i think that's probably what fuels his writing because he's mm-hmm. so observant and he is silent. Mm-hmm. I think an opportunity to be an outsider in a new environment would be good for him. And the more he does it, mm-hmm. the better he'll get at it. Yes. It's like practice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I totally was like Marianne looking at him like, mm-hmm. okay, bitch, I know it's scary, but go, <laughs> you should go. <laughs> no, I, I, um, I, I would love to see these two get together just to catch up 
um, a movie like, where they're both in New York for the day yeah. and they meet up for a coffee and it's just... Yeah, it's like, you know, four years later and uh, they meet up and they have the opportunity to 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 talk and to spend time with one another. Um, I would just love it. Love it! Let's pitch this to Sally Rooney. Yes. Sally, <laughs> come on, girl. She's like, I'm not interested. I've, made, I've written a new book. And we're like, nope. Nope. Uh-uh. Just Gotta go this. back to these two. Come on. <laughs> I know you're wanting to trip the light fantastic somewhere else, but nope. Uh-uh. You got to come back here. <laughs> Unfinished business. <laughs> um, speaking of Connell's growth. Yeah. Uh, he became editor. I know. And I'm... <laughs> I was like, do you remember back when he was making fun of Gareth for being a joiner? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, guess what, he's now, son? He's, he's now the editor. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Whatever happened to Gareth? <laughs> I miss Gareth. Yeah. Like, I know he was, he had problematic relationships with mm-hmm. political ideology but um yeah but anyway, yeah. i'd love to have seen him just pop out at the end to be like well done connell mm-hmm. and then walk away yes <laughs> <laughs> but yeah i mean i feel like this was such a great indication of how he's grown in confidence yes like somebody gave a speech about how great he was and yeah he looked fucking uncomfortable <laughs> but he just stood there and took it yeah, and then everyone clapped and everyone was like yay Carlo. and he was like okay <laughs> he was adorable um and uh you know I, I think that you know it's clear that his writing is his writing is um showing just how good he is Everyone loves him. Mm-hmm. I love that for him. Yeah. That he was like such an outsider and now everyone is like, huzzah, Connell! <laughs> like a whole room of people mm-hmm. <laughs> were cheering. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, that's great. Oh. And I, I like, I'm really happy that he was the one of, between Marianne and Connell, like it would have been very easy to make Marianne the writer, mm-hmm. but that Connell is the one pursuing something creative mm-hmm. Um given that he is working class, mm-hmm. is really great to see. It's not, it's, it isn't, so I get that that's not that unusual because there was a period of time where, you know, a brief economic period <laughs> where it was possible, you know, when university was cheap uh-huh. and you could buy a house for like $5,000 and whatever, and you could choose to pursue writing. That's not the case anymore. No. You know, it's, if you're working class and you decide that you want to be a writer, basically fucked for money. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> really great to see Connell be like, fuck it, I'm going to try anyway. Um, Because he has such insecurities about being working class. Mm-hmm. Like, that's also another indication to me that he's worked through that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and he's grown because that would have been something he would have perceived as a barrier before, and he would have let it stop him. But mm-hmm. he's like, now I'm gonna fucking go for it. Mm-hmm. So yay, Connell. You... Maybe the room full of people were correct. <laughs> <laughs> you are awesome. <laughs> I will say, like the fact that his story was called the Beacon made me question: like, <laughs> is he a good writer? Because that's a terrible name. <laughs> <laughs> you know how like whenever there's like oh there's supposed to be a an impressive poet remember Pollock? oh yeah whenever there was poetry yeah and i'd be like this is genuinely <laughs> bad poetry <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's what's so cringe like whenever people are writers in books or tvs and movies They've got to be, like, genuinely impressive. Otherwise, it just falls flat. You're like, this is... They're supposed to be the best of this? Question mark? Oh, dear. <sighs> yeah. The Beacon. Mm. Fucking terrible name. Wow. Okay, Marianne and Connell. Yes. Together. The big thing for them this week? Communication. They actually communicate effectively. And Therapy works, people. Yes. Therapy works. Yes, it does. Oh, it was really lovely 
to to how many times have I said lovely uh, in this episode? Um, but um, keep saying it. It's accurate. Uh, you know, I thought it was lovely uh, to see them having um, a a deep conversation um, in relaxed, um, soothing environment. Um, there was tea. Yes, there was tea. Yes, so that helped. I think. Yes. Um, you know, even the the scene where you know they are post coital again. Whoa, male frontal nudity! Yay! <laughs> well, if she's going to be naked. He should I, be naked I, too. I, I totally agree. Totally agree. Um, but uh, you know when they're having it, they're actually having a conversation after they have sex, and. It is honest and a little, um, a little shy. It's a little crit. It's a little crit, isn't it? Because it's like, did you enjoy it? Yeah. It's a little shy and, you know, uncertain. But, you know, they're having the conversation. They're having conversations, even though the subject matter is potentially risky and um, um, not necessarily uh safe and they're open to hearing what the other has to say um and you know hearing that and uh yes. yeah and i think the the best example of that was when he was like okay well you should come to new york mm-hmm. with me that was a moment of potential insecurity and rejection for him when she declined mm-hmm. um she was able to explain why she didn't want to so yeah. clearly and he understood and validated her reasons mm-hmm. without feeling like it was a personal slight and mm-hmm. she was rejecting him yep that's really fucking mature i mean like, and, you th- and you know that we've seen i don't know how many examples of where that kind of misinterpretation between the two of them has caused everything to just go tits up (laughs) um you know but now they're actually able to hear what the person is saying and uh be able to digest it um and because they're not so deeply insecure Mm -hmm. i think in the past he would have heard that and been like this is a deep rejection of me as a person because she doesn't love me because I'm a terrible, terrible person, because that's how Connell thinks. Mm-hmm. He's, he hates himself, and he thinks she must hate him too. Yeah. But no, he's worked through that shit, and now he's just able to listen to mm-hmm. her without getting in his own head about his own insecurity. Yeah. And she's able to think clearly, like, in the past, if he had made that offer, she would be like, okay, yes, I will do whatever you ask of me. Mm-hmm. I will be of service to you, mm-hmm. the only thing that is important in my life. The fact that she's able to reject this offer and focus on what's good for her mm-hmm. profoundly. I mean, that is that is <laughs> light years a uh, light years away from where she was um, earlier in the show. I know mm-hmm. it's so fucking healthy and mature. Yeah. yeah, that I'm in awe. I've seen people like three times their age fail to communicate as mm-hmm. effectively as they have. Oh yeah. And I think this reinforces the end message of we have improved each other as people. Mm -hmm. And this relationship has been so good for us. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, this has been proven Mm -hmm. through this whole conversation. And we're going to be okay. I hate when people are like, oh, we we made each other better people. And I'm like, I've seen no evidence of this. (laughs) I need statistical evidence. (laughs) Show me your workings. (laughs) And... I love that I can just point at this conversation and go, yeah, actually, you have you you have made each other better people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's true. Correct, Sally. <laughs> <sighs> just <sighs> such an outstanding uh, television series. Um, OK, mm-hmm. this isn't really a what's Connor reading because Connor wasn't reading anything. But he gave uh, Marianne a book of novel, uh, poems mm-hmm. by Frank O'Hara. Mm-hmm. He is this wonderful queer poet. That was part of emphasis, the New York School of Poets. Mm. Like grained, uh, it was that kind of 50s, 60s counterculture movement. Mm-hmm. He writes these really beautiful uh, autobiographical poems that 
actually, Sally Rooney is clearly a fan of them because in the her first novel, Conversation with Friends, mm-hmm. which I highly recommend, the epigraph is a quote from one of his poems. Ah. Oh. Wait, let me grab the book. Let me find the page. In times of crisis, we must all decide again and again whom we love. End quote. Mm. If anyone has a few minutes, um, Google Having a Coke with You by Frank O'Hara. Mm. It is a great poem that I think is a, in touch with Sally Rooney's own style, mm-hmm. which is quite autobiographical. Okay. And this is a great choice for this scene Mm -hmm. uh, because i think it's a subtle way of being like hey he's already kind of in touch with his new york vibes yeah yeah i want and i wonder if like he has been reading more um new york writers after he applied Mm -hmm. (laughs) he was like i've applied i better start preparing subconsciously for my time in new york yeah um that's such a common it, thing it wouldn't it wouldn't surprise me um you know as you know it is the idea of possibly doing this is becoming um a little bit more real for him i think as the days go by you know after he's shared the news with Marianne um you know the seed has been planted and so you know, you wind up, you wind up noticing more and more things that are um, affiliated with the, 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 the new fascination um, that you may have. And so it, it wouldn't surprise me if he was starting to dabble in um, the New York writing scene. I would love to see just like, him smoking a cigarette off a fire escape in New York. Like, that's just. <laughs> and I imagine him there mm-hmm. <laughs> writing in his tiny little notebook. That's that's the image I have of him there. It's like a very romanticized <laughs> view. <sighs> um, okay. okay. Uh, favorite performances? Tough. <sighs> uh, the whole damn show. Um, um, I thought the the um the conversation between the two of them the the second conversation between the two of them about new york i think was probably one of my favorite performances i also loved uh the new years um uh, going to the pub and you know doing the countdown and that whole montage that we had um i i loved the way that they did that um how about you Oh, and the Christmas Christmas uh, dinner at uh, Connell and Lorraine's house. Okay, you just list that's favorite scenes. We're doing performances. Oh crap! <laughs> you mix. Them. I always do that. Um, okay, yeah. so I've already offered my favorite scenes. Um, Let's just talk favorite scenes then. Um, my favorite scene is when Connell farts in the car. Okay, <laughs> that is the best scene. Oh. It is dorky. It is tiny. I feel like it was probably just something that happened on the set, and they went with it. Oh God, that was hilarious, and I love the way that that was. Um, that was the screen capture that they had for the the episode. Yeah, yeah. Like you know when I said that the. the my favorite scene is in a is them in a car. Yeah, that's, that's it. That's it. <laughs> it's just too fast. <laughs> Nothing profound. Oh. It, I don't even like fart jokes. I think they're juvenile. But it's just they were both giggling over something silly, and I was like, "This has never happened yeah. in eleven episodes." Yeah. Like they're both like just like dorks. <laughs> <sighs> like the dorks they are. Um yeah. Yeah, I mean as far as uh performances, I I need to give it to both um Paul and uh Daisy. Um they were such a beautiful um pair to They're watch. They're a team, aren't they? Yeah, to to watch uh, in this episode. Oh, you know, all of the episodes, but I think just to to see them portraying the growth that these characters have had was gave me some real visceral feelings about um 
the 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 power of healing. Um, so yeah, I I think that they deserved every single award out there. Yes, I like that when Paul won his BAFTA, mm-hmm. he dedicated his award to Daisy because I think he mm. recognizes that so much of his performance was because he had such a good scene partner mm-hmm. in Daisy, and I think I wish she had gotten the same kind of accolades because yeah. I think that like they're such equals throughout this mm-hmm. show. Mm-hmm. Like you couldn't have got the performance from Daisy without Paul mm-hmm. or from Paul without Daisy. Like they're just a team. Mm-hmm. They're working together. Yeah. Um, uh, you yeah. posted a picture on uh, the in the books uh, Instagram feed. Uh, it was either the feed or the story. It was one of the two, uh, and it looks like it was like uh, the the final wrap um, that they did. They're, they've got the you know the marker, you know the, the little clapboard thing, and and flowers, and uh, you know they're both just smiling ear to ear um the, i love that picture so much um and it made me feel like you know they were both in it together and were <sighs> such a great team yeah yeah and i like this like they're still besties now which, mm-hmm. which is awesome like, it's amazing i'm like yes <laughs> finally <laughs> Uh, I love the like this like when he was doing his press tour for his latest movie uh-huh. he'd be like they were like, Okay, you've got to call up someone famous. Who does he immediately think of? <laughs> Daisy Because <laughs> <laughs> that's his friend and there's like I've seen videos of them like dancing at Coachella together and they're just moshing. <laughs> it's just like they've become I think because the the filming for this must have been incredibly intense. Oh yeah. And then they're both became famous during lockdown Mm -hmm. like that just created a bond with them yeah um and it's really nice and it makes me think like if they ever do do a sequel (laughs) (laughs) sally really wrote that sequel book (laughs) um they would both be down to i would love to see them again when they're like i want to i want a sequel when they're middle-aged i wouldn't want one that's like when they're like 26 yeah like i would want them to be mature yep and i would love to see them work together when they're a bit older and Mm -hmm. they see how their dynamics changed Mm -hmm. and they have all this history as friends it would be incredible to see them work together Mm -hmm. again but it would have to be a long long time from now because like (sighs) yeah they're they're both need to both they're both young create distance yeah (laughs) so yeah it's like 15 years 15 20 years something like that like, I'm just, all I'm saying is Leo and Kate did it. Yeah, I mean, that's Revolutionary true. Revolutionary Road was a, not a very good movie, but <laughs> <laughs> it can be done. Yeah, it can. Um, let's see. Costumes, hair, and makeup. Okay, not anything to do with anything, but Marianne's hair being wet when she'd worn a swimming cap bothered me so much. Well, do those caps really keep your hair dry, or is it yes. just more to 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 provide aerodynamics they keep your hair dry as shit really okay? yes i i have had to wear them all the time when mm-hmm. we went swimming for school mm-hmm. and i have a lot of hair like it's thick yeah you do <laughs> aggressive it's an aggressive amount of hair and like it would squeeze so tightly i would get headaches oh. because the, the rubber is like ah. um you can keep your hair bone dry. Wow. It is very satisfying and necessary if you have this much hair because you can't be washing that all the time. <laughs> it would never dry. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I was like, okay, so you put you put the sewing cap on. So you kept your hair dry. Then you wash it? <laughs> Question mark. <laughs> What is the point? Oh, she's got that. Maybe she just she's got that fine get hair that. thing that going yeah, on. She, so she washes it every day. Yeah, Ugh. you know, I that is not my life. <laughs> <laughs> not my life, honey. <laughs> not our lives, no. No. Um, but yeah, but between that and her cleansing just her cheeks, <laughs> sacrilege. <I was> like, <laughs> 
Marianne, what's going on? But the thing is, I, at first I thought she was putting cream on because yeah. a really thick cream. But then she brought out the wipe to take the cream off. And I, none of this is remotely answering the question, but just things were happening with Marianne that made me question if she was okay, actually. Maybe it was all a lie. <laughs> In terms of her uh, her clothes, turtlenecks, mm. browns, yeah. comfy shoes were an option. She's in her academia phase where she is just going to wear a turtleneck yep. and some tweed trousers <laughs> and it's not, no, no makeup. Yeah, she is, she is not putting on a persona. She is, she is being Marianne. She looked comfortable. Yeah, she did. Good for her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I felt like she was dressing more like a grown-up who was dressing practically and not like somebody who is trying to impress everyone on campus, mm-hmm. which is a classic fourth-year behavior. <laughs> which is like, you just yeah, show up like, like uh, uh, you know, you're you doing you're doing good if you are able to put on some pants that you know are relatively clean. <laughs> Um, uh, find a shirt that doesn't have a big old stain on it. Stain, yeah. Um, you know, and you like throw your hair in a ponytail and uh, uh, shuffle off to your eight a.m. class. You're doing, you're, you know, you're you're doing good. <laughs> yeah. I love that for her. Yeah, nothing to say about Connell because Connell. Well, he did have a Christmas jumper on, actually. Yes, he did. Mm-hmm. That it, was adorable. It would definitely uh, be appropriate for an ugly Christmas uh, sweater competition. He could show up to uh, the Bridget Jones's mother's mm-hmm. turkey buffet. The, the curry, the curry, the the curry turkey, Tur- or the turkey curry, the turkey curry buffet. <laughs> yes. yeah. He could show up. Yeah, mm-hmm. actually, if nobody's done the post Christmas turkey curry thing oh it's such a good use of you really need it after such bland food um <laughs> no shade to christmas dinner because it's nice but come on it's not the most flavorful yeah uh, anyway yeah not the point locations and photography uh, um <sighs> nice to be back in carrick lee again yeah love the shots at the beach yeah uh, so beautiful but i think so the, cold. i mean so cold so cold (laughs) given that they shot this mostly during the summer months i thought they captured christmas brilliantly Mm -hmm. like the twinkly lights the naff tinsel just like the sort of working class everyone crammed into the same room Mm -hmm. kind of around the little tiny table yes yes (laughs) yeah it just screams christmas yeah Uh, the scene where they're playing heads up, and the grandmother <laughs> asks if uh, she's a political figure, yes. and it's Kim Kardashian will always be <laughs> iconic to me. And everyone just giggles. Oh, God. That had to have been improvised, right? Uh, There's no way that was scripted. I would hope so. <laughs> but that was wonderful. Um, you know, I I think that, you know, this show has, has just been so beautiful. Um, you know, from the the gray, dreary days all the way to the glorious, sunny Italian uh, afternoons. Um, it, oh, Italy! Yeah it <laughs> it has been uh, really uh, exquisitely done. And you know, we really I don't think we've really talked a whole lot about it. The episode where she's in um, Sweden, but oh, it goes without saying that Sweden is beautiful oh my god (laughs) oh my god yes just stunning Mm. i loved it all yeah there was no yeah anything you didn't like no (laughs) no i'm gonna take no Mm -mm. no negatives from you it was perfect um how many communist five 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 all of the five i'd give it more if it wouldn't get you all twisted out of shape but um <laughs> uh it's just statistically impossible to yes. be more than a hundred percent okay yes. <laughs> all right yes ma'am uh but yeah <laughs> fives across the board Time for inbox let's mm-hmm. hear what you all thought let's see hi girls morgana here we've reached the end of this depressive journey together <laughs> 
Um, and I have a question for Michelle. At the beginning, we joked about how we shouldn't force anyone to watch normal people since I forced my sister and Rita forced you. Now that you've finished, do you intend to campaign for people in your personal life to watch? And if so, how would you sell the series so that people wouldn't be afraid to watch it if they know it's very sad? You know, I think um, I think I would be uh, thrilled to talk about this with uh, my buddies uh, because, uh, first of all, I know that they've read the book um, and because uh, we have a book club. And so I know that they've read the book. Um, <gasps> you should do it for book club. Be like, hey. <laughs> I know you read it already, but let's discuss this. No, you're probably sick of it. But, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, so I think I would be able to say, and, you know, particularly if they hadn't already watched it, um, I would be able to say, you know, this is uh, the most faithful book to um, screenplay adaptation that I have ever seen. And that the performance is uh, unmatched. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I, I would have no problem, uh, telling, uh, my friends about this. Um, you know, I, we can't always have happy stories, um, you know, to, to be able to just live in a world where everything always ends up, you know, with, you know, the couple riding off into the sunset and, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, I, I know that that's something that I can't have, uh, in my life. And so, you know, I think that, that, you know, I would be happy to tell them, you know, have some Kleenex nearby. Um, and there may be some episodes that you might not want to watch on public transportation. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I, I think that they would love it. So that's going to be my sales pitch. Okay. Back to the letter. Um, I don't think I have much to say about the episode other than the first time I saw it, I was pissed at the ending, them bre- breaking <laughs> See, up. I told you. Yeah. Um, my sister consoled me by saying that they would get back together. Neither of them are people who move on. The series proves this episode after episode, so they would get back together in the future. At the time, that comforted me. But today, with 29 years and having my own codependent relationship with my twin sister, having gone through this separation process two years ago, I see the importance and maturity of the step that Marianne took in the end. She is much more mature than I was. At the time, I thought they just didn't end up together because it was a drama, and as a drama, the authors are obliged to give us a sad ending. But today, I see that it was the most important step that the two characters take so that they can be functional so they can stop being codependent. Not that codependency is bad. At some points in life, they literally save us. As we, bo- as we saw with both of them, each one dealing with their depression, their self-esteem and setting limits and creating non-abusive relationships, they got better when they had each other. But there's something that happens in codependent relationships that sometimes we think that without that person, we would not have survived, which Connell brings up at the end. It's difficult to separate all the work we did on our mental health from all the support we received to get us to the end. And then it seems that without that person, we wouldn't have gotten there. And who will know this answer? But I think it's amazing that Marianne gets to a point where she knows what she wants, and what she wants is just as important as what Connell wants. Important enough for her to give up on him and put what she wants in front of what he wants. She's not staying for an incredible job opportunity. She's staying because that's where she is at peace and happy. And she knows that changing countries, adapting to a new culture, making new friends is a change that she's already experienced in Switzerland and that she knows how much it cost her, or Sweden, and she knows how much it cost her. Today, having allowed my sister to fly wherever she wanted and having learned to think just in what is it I want. Uh, Been able to see the results, seeing that our relationship went from suffocating to more communicative, respectful, and egalitarian. Because each one had time to understand and get to know herself without the other. 
This is what I project in the future of Connell and Marianne's story. The maturity, the self-knowledge, communication, and acceptance of the other's wishes. And of course, a better relationship. Stronger, healthier, and happier than ever before. Because this show is so romantic. I think that's it, girls. Thanks for all the work you guys put in this podcast. It is my favorite. Do you already have a calendar for the next series? Are you going to take a few weeks off? I hope you have a lovely week. See you, girls. Morgana. Thanks, Morgana. Thanks, I Morgana. I love the journey you've gone through with this show where you're like, yes. actually, <laughs> this is good. As for our plans, we have uh, very limited time <laughs> off. We're going to take, take uh, two, two weeks, basically. Two, and then... two, three weeks, something like that. Probably, probably closer to two. Probably, yeah, look, it's two, basically. Because it's and then we're, it starts, Bridgerton yeah, season three. Yeah, it starts on May 16th. So I really don't get any time off because I'm also trying to come up with stuff to share on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't spoil yourself, my friend. Oh, like, I... Sh- I've muted the Bridgerton account. I'm like, no, nope, I'm not dealing with this. Oh, gosh. Sorry for an insight into my <laughs> panic. <laughs> oh. We we just need the break. Look, after yeah. two weeks, we'll be like, okay. Yep, we'll be, we'll be ready to go. Let's do this shit. Yes. We'll be back. So stay tuned for Bridgerton uh, starting after the 16th of May. Hello, Michelle and Rita. I can't believe Normal People was 12 episodes. <sighs> it was a lot of ups and downs. It ended with Marianne and Connell being separated, but in a good place. I like that Marianne was always supportive of Connell's writing. She's like an onion. She had to peel away her layers to find the very strong, independent, and supportive woman that she is. Did Connell do full nudity in the last sex scene? Yes. I was doing dishes and I couldn't tell. Yep. <laughs> Do dishes while watching normal uh-uh. people. You might drop a plate. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it's dangerous. <sighs> I enjoyed the series, but I think it was too many episodes and probably could have done it at eight. No. No. <laughs> because the no. last few episodes no, were less no, than 30 no, no. minutes. I didn't read the book and I didn't like the time jumps. Overall, enjoy the series. I really enjoyed Jules' conversation this series. What are you doing? going to do next? Bridgerton. 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 We are doing Bridgerton. Bridgerton. I think the time jumps probably are a bit jarring if mm-hmm. you're watching the TV show compared to the book. Yeah. They don't always explain that there's been a time jump. Mm-hmm. They don't do the no. 17 months later. Yeah. Bump. <laughs> yeah. It's it's nice in the book because you get a heads up at the start of each chapter. Uh, it's like three weeks later. Yes. Bump. Two weeks later. Bump. Six months later. Bump. Yes. Uh, Hi, ladies. A big thank you for all the work you do for the podcast, as always, beautifully done. Now about episode 12. Why can't we have nice things? I'm going to stamp my feet a little now. Is This is a safe space, right? Yes. As I watched that beautiful period of actual happiness and contentment between them, I just knew this damn story would change. <laughs> <laughs> why oh, why couldn't she have just tried a year away i mean being away from home for a while might be an amazing experience for both of them who knows it could even make them uh, even stronger yeah we can agree that they had been through some damn difficult times but did they come out on the but they did come out the other end they helped each other to grow supported each other and above all showed that their love for one another did heal most of their wounds once they actually communicated. Their bond was eerily strong, which was beautiful. I guess we're supposed to feel that they are both stronger and better people as a result of their relationship over many years, culminating in Marianne finding some contentment, wanting to be in Dublin alone. I hope it will not test her again, but I worry about Connell being in the Big Apple by himself. I really do. His Skype sessions would be invaluable then. Ultimately, I guess Sally is trying to reflect real life without the sugar coating, which is okay, but sugar isn't all bad. But I'm wondering, do you think the ending is ambiguous or not? I loved the amazing acting by all and the beautiful and intense emotions, albeit challenging at times. But ultimately, I, and dare I say many others, Wanted them together. I mean, we all struggled emotionally through this entire story for question mark, footstamp, footstamp. 
Um, I knew it was a bittersweet story as we went along, but as I reflected on this show, I will choose to believe the story ended at 20 minutes into this last episode when everyone was happy. I mean, the family scenes where Marianne sees what a loving family really encompasses, especially when Lorraine hugs her with the love a mother reserves for a child coming home. Heart emoji. But also when Marianne and Connell actually say, I love you in front of all those people. And we really felt it. Why couldn't you want more? Why wouldn't you want more than that? God knows she deserves more love to make up for all she didn't get growing up. I know she wants Connell to fly, but she could be his co-pilot. <laughs> ciao, ciao, Rigazi. Uh, Maria. P.S. I think I've been overrun with great series movies recently that end like this. I think I just want some good old happy endings now. <laughs> is it still okay to have them now, or is everything going to be about putting the audience through the emotional washing machine. <laughs> oh, thanks, Maria. And thank you so much for the coffees. You bought us five coffees. We're going to be so gonna caffeinated. Be, you're going to be you. so hyped up. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> and then she asked, like, if you found the ending ambiguous. As we have stated previously, I thought it was a happy ending. <laughs> I was like, oh, we sad they broke up? I'm like, did they break up? Um, Did they break up? They didn't say the words that they were breaking up, but I think it's implied. They yeah, may be, but then like, I'm also like... But I don't think that they're going to be doing the whole long distance romance no. thing. Um, but They were definitely on, on the, hey, there might meet new people and it might be fun. Yeah. But they might not meet new people. Mm -hmm. and get back together that's yeah. the thing it's like are you half full or half empty i am usually half empty um but i'm gonna go with half full for this one these people are obsessed with each other yeah. i just don't think they're never gonna have sex again yeah well you know here's here's the thing i can't think of another couple who wouldn't do well getting back together or do as well getting back together as these two now that they've gone through all of this. Plus, I just think it's like a pattern of behavior at this point. Yeah. <laughs> like, that, that, one of them leaves, yeah. they get back together. Yeah, that's true. You see other people, they get back together. <laughs> she goes to Sweden, they get back together. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, I, I just don't think yeah. we need to be worried that they're, no, they're never going to see each other again. <laughs> And as I have pointed out, I really don't care. They may never talk to each other again. It doesn't matter because when they were on screen, they were together. <laughs> the work, look, three seconds later, the whole of Dublin could be bombed by a UFO. Like, for all we know, it doesn't matter. It's happening off screen, you know? Suddenly an alien attack. <laughs> or <laughs> Godzilla comes out from the ocean and attacks Dublin. You know, like, it does not matter. You know, next week the MFA he could get an email from the MFA program and say, "Actually, sorry, you're, yeah, <laughs> you're sorry, you're off." <laughs> That's just as likely as the Godzilla scenario that I've uh. Um Though I like now, I'm imagining normal people meets Godzilla. And <laughs> fantastic! Oh my god! Please write the fanfic. <laughs> On that weird, bizarre note from me. <laughs> Uh, that's all from this episode <laughs> <laughs> and our series of normal people who knew when we started that oh, it would no. end with a random <laughs> Godzilla scenario from me <laughs> couldn't have predicted it nope. we'll be back soon in the meantime you'll find us on our sister podcast Bridgerton Fancast where we will be reviewing season 3 and lamenting all the weird products that have come out about Bridgerton. Oh my god, Michelle, I was walking home <sighs> this afternoon and I saw a new product. No. <sighs> what is it now? You know how they had the Pat McGrath makeup? And they've now gone for a low-budget makeup oh god. Um, collaboration. Oh god. Oh how the mighty have fallen. <laughs> uh, Kaiko Milano. Who, 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 who? Exactly. <laughs> Oh wow. Well, I I think the worst one is the um coffee creamer. The coffee creamer. <laughs> yeah. 
That one no, is the like, worst no, one. No, but like the rugs are pretty weird as well. Well, what the fuck at is least the at least they had rugs back then. They didn't have coffee creamer. Artificial Nobody has coffee, coffee creamer, creamer in England anyway. <laughs> like you could transport to 2024. Oh. Nobody's fucking having coffee creamer. Oh my okay, lord! Okay, in England, I don't. I'm not sure I know what coffee creamer is. Oh jeez! So the fact that they're I, trying to I may have this to buy a bottle. <laughs> I may have to buy a bottle and send it over to you. <laughs> what is it? Is it cream? It is a um, non-dairy coffee uh, creamer. So yeah, it's non-dairy. Okay, first coffee should be black. I'm sorry to get all European, um, but if I was gonna have a non-dairy option it would be oat milk oh, why no, would yes. i be putting why would i be putting what the hell what the oh, fuck is this nonsense in? yeah you you don't even want to know it's it's, it's just gonna be like different oils yeah. isn't it mm-hmm. uh, oh, yeah it's, it's america <laughs> why are you putting oil in your coffee oh lord think about this <laughs> We've got wildly off track, yeah, which we is have. a sign that normal people may they may have improved their lives, but it has ruined ours. Um, so, in the meantime, no, we're definitely doing a podcast that's just us slagging off all of, all of the Bridgerton merch. Please follow us on social media to keep abreast of all pod updates and all of the slander we have. For the yes, coffee creamer. We are. In the Books Network, and we thank you so much for listening. We will see you soon. Bye. Bye.